Hi everyone, I'm Whitney and welcome back to Whitney Sews. Today I am sharing a Sew Your Stash update for the summer months. If you aren't familiar with Sew Your Stash, it is a challenge I started a couple years ago where instead of going out and purchasing fabrics when I want to start a new project, I first look to the fabrics and supplies that I already own in an attempt to use some of those things that I've had sitting around for far too long uh, before I start purchase new things and just keep adding and adding and adding to the stash that I already have. So it's been a really fun challenge that is definitely ongoing and um, it basically for the rest of my life probably I'll be working on it. Um, but I like to share update videos to let you know the progress I'm making and to motivate those of you who are doing this challenge with me. There is a Facebook group that goes along with the challenge and there are thousands of people over there in the group sharing things that they are making and it's a lot of fun. There's a link down below for the group if you are interested in joining it. And yeah, so I want to share the things that I made this summer using Stash. And it feels like I don't have that many things to share, um, but I'm sure I made more than this. I just didn't get everything written down. But we were busy this summer getting our old house sold and lots of things. I already have a summer update video that I can link as well. Um, so we were definitely busy, but I did get some sewing done. So I want to share the projects that I made. The first one is a big win in my book because it was an unfinished project that I finished. So uh, anytime I'm able to do that, I feel so great because um, it's kind of discouraging to have a lot of unfinished projects sitting around and thinking, when am I ever going to finish that? Do I even want to finish that anymore? Um, but yeah, so this one is a project I started probably like seven or so years ago and is a shaped zipper bag. I was using a vintage Batman sheet and then this is some pieces cut from some old t-shirts that I just used to make some trim on it. I had cut everything out and I had already done the little trim work on it and I literally just needed to sew the bag together. So I got it sewn together. There's another sheet used for the lining, just a plain green sheet. And um, so I got it sewed together and the reason I decided to finish this one is my daughter really likes Batman. So I thought I would finish it and then hang on to it and then someday when she's um, really acting good or um, I feel like she just kind of could use a little reward for something, I'm going to surprise her with it. So um, I know she's really going to enjoy it and I am so glad that I finished this project that I started long before I even had kids. So next up is another um, couple of bags and it is a two bag set that I did two different tutorials for. And any project that I mentioned that there are tutorials for, I will definitely link to them. I'll have an entire playlist put together of them and it will be linked down below in the description box. Um, so these two bags that I make, that I made were using flannel for my stash. Flannel is something that I have a lot of. I have an entire tub full of flannel, but I really don't use that much flannel on a regular basis. So instead of thinking of projects that really work well with flannel. I just decided to use flannel for whatever I was making and I needed to make two bags to hold some like tinker type toys that I had bought at a thrift store for my kids to use. I made a zipper bag for all of the little bitty pieces and then I made a larger zippered tote bag for the bigger pieces and for the smaller bag to go inside. It turned out really well. I love it and um, the flannel worked out perfectly and my kids use this bag all the time because, you know, it's in their play area and anytime they want to play with those toys they know they can just grab the bag, they can get everything out and they can put everything back up when they're done. Um, which is great because um, when I store things in like um, Ziploc type bags, they can't get the Ziploc bags closed themselves when they're done. But with fabric bags, like things that I make, they can open and close the zippers all by themselves without any trouble, which is fantastic. And they are responsible for putting their own things away when they're done. And so I was so happy with that project because not only did I use a fabric that I don't gravitate to that often, but it is so functional in our day to day life. The next one I made was rainbow bunting and I love this one so much. It is kind of hard to show how adorable it is when it's done because um, 
it's hard to take pro pictures of projects that are so big, um, but it turned out so cute. I made each flag of the bunting in a different color of the rainbow and I used a different color bias tape for each flag and then they were all tied together at the end. So this was a take on an older tutorial of mine which was just the basic bunting all on one string and I had the vision in my head because my kids and I love anything in color order so I knew I wanted it to be in color order and I was trying to figure out a way to have the bunting the strings to kind of blend into that so I knew I couldn't use one color of bias tape for the entire thing so I headed to my bias tape bin and let me show it to you I happen to have it sitting right here this is my bin full of bias tape and this isn't even all of it I have two or three other jumbo rolls of bias tape that don't fit in here so I have a ton and this is part of my stash that I am trying to make use of. And so for this rainbow bunting, I was able to actually use up a couple of different bias tapes that I just had little bits and scraps of. And I am so happy for that. And I also used bias tape for the two zipper bags that I mentioned that used the flannel. So I was really on a bias tape roll there. Um, but yeah, so this project turned out super cute. My kids absolutely love it. It is decorating our homeschool room and it is just exactly how I wanted it and it turned out perfect. Then I used some of my clear vinyl stash. I bought two different remnants of clear vinyl years and years ago. I'm not exactly sure why I thought I needed all this clear vinyl. I know the second time I bought it, I had forgotten I had bought it before because it was lost in my room. So I rebought it. But I don't know why I thought I needed vinyl in the first place, really. Um, so I have quite a bit of clear vinyl. And I don't particularly like working with it. Um, but I'm getting better at working with it and the most recent project I did was a clear vinyl tote bag and the reason I made it was I was attending an event in a large like stadium type setting and this particular one um, doesn't allow anyone to bring in bags unless they are clear and it's just like a safety precaution that they have and instead of going out and buying a clear bag or having to carry around like a gallon sized Ziploc bag the whole night um, which I knew I would sit down and lose I decided to make a clear vinyl tote bag that had a zipper that way if my kids knocked it over or anything it, things wouldn't spill out of it like my wallet and my keys um, and it went well I don't know that I'll ever use the tote bag again but it worked perfectly for the situation that I needed it for and I did do a tutorial on it in case anyone else finds themselves in a similar situation where they need a bag for a certain event and um, or maybe you just like clear bags I don't know some people do um, but it turned out pretty well and I used up some of that clear vinyl then I made a smaller project that was a little needle book and I had never had a needle book before. I had always just left my needles and in the um, package that they came in and then like my pens I kept in a pin cushion or on a magnetic pin dish thing. Um, but I actually really like having this needle book. I didn't know if I would like having it so much but I really do. Um, I have thrown it in different bags several times and taken it to conventions this summer when I thought I might need to do some costume repair on the go. And uh, it's just nice. If I want to work on like a hand sewing project in another room, I just grab that, a pair of scissors and my thread and I'm good to go. Um, so I really enjoy it. It was a quick and easy project and one that turned out being really useful. Next up is a project that was not a win in my book. Um, I did use some fabric for my sash, but I ended up not liking this project at all. So I've had this Mickey Mouse fabric in my stash since about 2012. And I think it's cute, but I never knew what to make from it. So I made a drawstring bag and it was supposed to be to hold Legos. And I put little pockets on the inside to hold the little Lego people um, but unfortunately my measurements were off for one thing so the bag ended up 
quite a bit taller than planned so it's a little funny proportion and then the pockets inside since they are so short to fit the little Lego people um, they just kind of flop open and I don't feel like they're useful at all so it's hard to see on camera but I just I hate how the bag turned out I did not even put the drawstrings in it because I just don't like it I have zero plans of using it um, I don't know maybe I will end up using it for something not the intended purpose but for just as a basic bag I intended on this being a tutorial I filmed every step of it but at the end I just changed my mind and said you know what I am not happy with how this project turned out I cannot um, you know convincingly be like hey make this project I think it's great because I don't think it's great and I don't want to you know give the impression that I like something that I don't like if I don't love how something turned out I'm not going to give it out to y'all as a tutorial that you should make because if you make it you're probably not gonna love it either so it's just you know it's one of those that just a project that didn't turn out how I wanted and the reason I wanted to share it is a I did use stash um, and B to let you all know that just because I've been sewing for 19 years does not mean I'm perfect does not mean everything I make turns out amazing you know I mess up too I plan things that just don't look great um, they don't work out as intended and it's okay I can learn from this and I can make something better in the future then I worked on another project and it was for a convention so my kids were saying that they wanted to dress up as characters from the new She-Ra for Halloween so I was like you know what I'm gonna get a jump on things and I'm going to make an Adora costume for myself so I can dress up with them for Halloween so I went to the thrift store I found a vintage blazer and I did these different alterations to it I cut off the buttons I lacked the front out of the zipper did the sleeve details all this stuff um, you're probably wondering where the stash part comes in so I used stash for the zipper obviously I used a separating zipper that I've had a while so I actually used this pattern for my stash which is Butterick 5556 and it is a 1955 dress reprint and I used the collar piece I um, added five inches actually to it so that it would come around far enough but I used that as the jumping off point for the collar for my costume I used fabric for my stash and I used fusible foam for my stash to give it some nice structure and it turned out really well I also used some of that foam to create a little triangular shaped hair bump for me because she has very specific shaped hair in the front and it went really well I am very happy with how it turned out I only spent like a couple of evenings working on it before the convention and um, I won what did I win I won some award for it I can't remember which one uh, I think I came in third place at a convention wearing this costume so it was a lot of fun I used a little bit of stash and yeah so um, my kids actually though change their mind on what costumes they're gonna wear so I won't be wearing this for Halloween but I'm glad I made it because it is a very comfortable costume to wear so it's nice for a convention where I just want to throw something on and be in a costume but not be uh, really uncomfortable or have a lot of props or anything like that so I'm um, glad I made it even though it turned out not being for the original Halloween intended purpose the next thing I worked on was the August dress and it was a part of the hashtag so timber collab that I was in and I used happy together by Jess I think is the person who 
created the pattern. I forget exactly. Um, but it was a fun pattern to work with. It's a free PDF pattern. And I used all stash fabrics and I was able to almost use up the Star Wars print that I used for the skirt. I had to do some creative cutting and piecing to get it all cut out and have the right amount. Um, but yeah, it was a fun pattern to work with. I used three different fabrics for my stash and my daughter loves the dress. She calls it her Star Wars princess dress and she's worn it several times. Um, yeah, so that one was really great because I have several Star Wars fabrics. I had purchased some myself and then I did a trade with someone after I started the Sew Your Stash Challenge. I sent um, some fabrics that I had found in my stash that I didn't even remember owning um, to her and she in turn sent me some Star Wars prints and I started a Star Wars quilt for my husband that I have not finished and I did a Star Wars quilt for a charity auction as well. And I still have some of the Star Wars fabrics left. So I've been trying to come up with different ways to put them to use. And this dress was one of the projects that I used them for. The last finished project that I have to talk about is the denim tote bag. That was my most recent tutorial and I absolutely love it. The denim is one that I bought last year. I bought an entire bolt of denim. I believe it was 15 yards, which is a lot. But the reason I bought the entire bolt, I bought it um, online. It was my first online fabric purchase and I did it because based off of the price that I paid for that bolt of fabric and the price denim is at Joanne Fabrics, um, it was a far better deal to buy the entire bolt. And as long as I use like a third of it, then it's basically paid for itself. So I made a pair of 1940s style jeans last um, late summer, early fall, and I did a little video about that. Um, that I can link as well. And then this is the first other project that I've used the denim for was this tote bag. And then I want to make some dungarees, which are like um, overalls basically, like 40 style overalls with the denim as well. Um, but I'll get around to that eventually. But anyway, this tote bag. Um, I knew I wanted to use the denim and I went through my stash and I found a red polka dot fabric and I just thought the red and the blue looked so great together and then I found um, another larger print fabric that I thought was just absolutely adorable that I could feature on the pockets and it just all came together so beautifully and I love it you all seem to be really enjoying that tutorial as well and um, yeah, I think that was the last thing that I made from my stash, but I have also been working on some other things. They're just not completed yet, so I will um, show the completed pictures in my next Sew Your Stash update. I have a green fabric that is left from my Arietti cosplay that I did earlier this year, and I have a teal blue bed sheet that I am cutting up, painting, I'm doing all this different stuff too in order to create a flower princess costume for my oldest daughter because she changed her mind. She doesn't want to be she -Ra. She wants to be a flower princess. So I am doing a ton of work and having a lot of fun working on it. I'm not filming it at all because it's just something I'm doing for fun for my daughter and enjoying every moment of it and I think it's going to turn out really cute. I hope it turns out really cute and um, when it's done and I have pictures and all that I will share them um, but yeah so that's an ongoing stash project that I have. So I think that is everything I have to share for today. I need to get off here and go work on applesauce. I bought 40 pounds of apples last week and because I do things like that when they're a really good deal and I am processing them in batches turning them into applesauce and canning it and I need to get back to work on that and yeah every single tutorial that I mentioned in this video will be linked in a playlist right over there to the side and until next time happy sewing